the entrance antiphon, Christ is mediator of a new covenant, so that by means of his death, those who are called may receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. Good morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. May we celebrate the memorial of St. Francis de Sales and pray for the, his community. And let's prepare for our celebration as a call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who chose St. John the Baptist de La Salle to educate young Christians, Raise up, we pray, teachers in your church, ready to devote themselves wholeheartedly to the human and Christian formation of the young. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham. For I am making you father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Lord, look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents, and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Your descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with all of you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we, have sh we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than the, our father Abraham who died, or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing, but it is my Father who glorifies me, 
of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see the my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jew said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. I did a count. You know, there's about over 30 women here and only six men. I just, just caught me funny. Sitting up there, I said, wow, is there a, this is a woman, a bus came in with all women today, just a... <clears throat> but, not saying, good way, you want to match up, someone who's single or looking, I don't know, nothing wrong with that. Father Murphy would be happy, probably, do the wedding and all that. You don't have to go through any of the preparation, I don't, none of you probably, so... No. So, <clears throat> that has nothing to do with the gospel either, but... But hearing the word of the Lord, Jesus is very clear. And that's why the Jews and the Roman authority and most of the people don't understand a lot of times what he's saying. Because he's declaring himself God. I mean, my father. And we are one. They're not getting it. Now, what he's saying, you know, the Jews would understand more, but... But not yet. They don't think just Jesus, who he is, is the Son of God coming in. You know, even though through the Torah and all that, I'm going to come, I'm going to come. So, so when he starts speaking that way, people get upset, think he's blasphemy. The Roman authority definitely doesn't like it he, because Jesus is having a following and talking this way. But I am. So the word of God, we listen to many words today. And we hear many words, oftentimes, and we say many words, that oftentimes have nothing to do with God. We, many times our word is disrespect, swearing, gossiping, judging, lying, anger. We see the world as a disaster. So for the most part, we go through life like that. Maybe not as extreme, but that's the world we live in. You could do a kind act and someone still could say something disrespectful back to you. You just don't know. But we live in a world that really, we know, we just have to turn on the TV and see the violence going on. We hate ourselves. We just do. There's no other reason for this. And we hate God because we remove God from our society. And I say it all the time, but I believe it's true. This is the end result, a snowball effect. You don't want me in your life? And you think you can do it better? Then go ahead and look at what we're doing. <laughs> Destroying ourselves daily, daily. But again, what word are we listening to? It is, are we listening to the word of life? I have come to give you life. I have come to give you life to the fullest. All things are possible through me who strengthens you. Those are the words of Jesus. And yet, and that's what the Roman authority, the Jew, well, Roman authority definitely wasn't listening to it. The Jewish authority, when they, especially when Jesus says, I have seen God, I know, how can you know him? You're not even 30 yet. You're in your 20s. And I know all this. So they don't get it. But we get it. So what word are we listening to do today? What type of word? We are called to the word of God in the scripture. It, any mass you attend, even if you're reading your own, the scripture, in your own privacy of your own home, wherever, it goes out. It doesn't come back void. It's not the priests have to say the, reading the gospel or reading the, the readings today. You have every right to read the gospel and read the words. You're supposed to call, that's the word speaking to you, speaking to me. It goes out. It doesn't come back void. It's just not me. How are we going to respond? That word, that the word of God dwelling within you, in me, we're called to act on that word. 
of love, of kindness, of decency, respect. We have the power of the Holy Spirit working in our life. And Jesus says throughout the scripture, I have come to give you life to the fullest. That life is the relationship with Christ. That life really is going out daily to do our best to witness the love, the kindness, the forgiveness of Christ. The season of Lent is all about slowing ourselves down, reflecting how maybe we could do a little bit better. Not that we're bad. It, we are very good. That is why Jesus, it doesn't make sense. He went on the, died on the cross because how good we are, not how bad we are. He died, took upon our sins so you and I could be free. So again, it's all about made in that limit, nim, image and likeness of Christ. And what did God say when he created the world? Everything is good. Everything. And we're part of, he created us. We're part of that goodness. We just don't want to believe it for some strange reason. We want to believe we're not good. We want to believe the negative things people say to us. It must, especially, I'm a stickler on the family because the family is the domestic church. And we say the most horrendous things in the family. We can cut someone down in an instant. And we know that. And we can destroy them in an instant. And we know that too. But the, the, the family life is the domestic church. That is, can understanding, and I say this many times, the ch- understanding of the Roman Catholic Church is already, you have all the power. You are already living out your faith within the family unit. You're already praying. We know that's not the case. I'm not saying most of you, because you, many of you come to daily mass, and I'm sure you go on the weekends, you're probably far ahead. But that's the understanding of God's word. I have come to give you life. You and I are made in the image and likeness of Christ. We have been called, and we call to act. That's why when we celebrate St. Francis, Francis de Sales and other the saints, we, we listen a, briefly a description about them maybe. We know most of their lives if we... They've been celebrated in the church for so many years. That's us. They were ordinary people. God touched them in a a special way. They saw a need. They didn't know what they were doing most of the time, but they were faithful. We know what we are doing sometimes, but even in our relationship with God, we don't know what we're doing most of the time. But we're called to act. The Eucharist we receive. This, this is my body. This is my blood. We know that. Jesus was very clear. Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you do not have life within you. When he's made that statement, many, the Jews and others up in arms, they rejected that outright. That's why they reject him. That's why really statements like that, that's what's bringing him to the cross. Not so much a little bit challenged the Roman authority. It's these statements that that are definite. There's no maybe. There's no I could be. It's, It's a definite statement about my life, who I am and what I've called to do and and how you will know is by what I'm doing already. That's what brings Jesus to the cross. Only because he challenged and the Jewish authority, and the, definitely the Roman authority. Because so many people were following Jesus now, as we know. Definitely Rome would not allow that to happen. Pagan world, there's only one God. Well, many gods, but one, one Roman authority. And no one would go against Rome. They were taking over the world. They were very active about taking over. And definitely the Jewish authority would not allow it. Again, pride, ego, attention, whatever. But Jesus challenged them because people were listening. People have been changing their life, changing their actions. Totally foreign. Totally foreign. But it's not foreign to you and I. The Eucharist we receive, that's the only reason we're here this morning. Listening to God's word and receiving the Eucharist. Once again, Jesus, amen, 
I be- that means I believe. Amen, I believe. You are the body and blood of Christ. Amen, I believe you're giving me life. Amen, the list is endless what I could say. You've called me by name. Amen, I'm called to go out to serve you. That's what, you want to know your day? You might have a little list right now in your pocket. Get rid of it, because it might change once you walk outside the door. You just don't know what someone's sitting next to you. You're seeing, they might say something to you. Maybe they need your assistance. Maybe you already planned your day. I gotta go shopping, I gotta go to the mall, I gotta do this. Well, don't ask me, I'll see you tomorrow. Or we see someone coming. I must admit, I've done this myself sometimes. Uh Uh-oh, they're gonna ask something of me. I'm turning around. And the property of the shine is very large. I can go one way and I have a quick walk. They'll never catch up. But we do that sometimes. That doesn't mean we don't like the person or don't want to help them, but we might have another day, something we want to do, and we really don't want to be bothered. That's the world. But our relationship with Christ in the season of Lent is about reflecting, slowing ourselves down. How well have, have we and are doing our best to witness the love and the mercy of Christ in getting rid of the junk that we need to get rid of? So we can be about the word of God dwelling within us that Eucharist will receive. Amen, Jesus, I believe. But that believe is, I believe you want me to go and to do my best, because some days are better than others, we're not perfect, to do my best to serve you, to witness your love, your kindness, your compassion. Again, the list is endless. That's our mission. But if we don't believe and I forget the number, it's so high, majority of the percent of Catholics, they come to church, but they don't believe in the real presence of Jesus. I don't understand that at all. I don't understand why they even go to church, really. Because I don't get it. There's no reason. The only reason we come is for the Eucharist. But they don't believe for some strange reason. But again, we don't want to believe. Because if we believe, truly believe, then we have to change our life. Our lives are no longer our own. The word of God goes out. It's no longer, we've heard it this morning. It's no longer void. We got to go. We got to respond. Maybe we will, maybe we don't. But again, people say the church is so, all the rules, regulations, and this and that. There's more freedom in the church than there is many times in your own homes and definitely in the society. You have to do this, you have to do this. Bliss is endless. But the church talks about love, serving one another, doing a kind act, living the Beatitudes. Oh, that's too hard to do. That's boring. I don't get anything out of church. The church is in the building. It's go- Once we leave the church, we're the church. It's as simple as that. We just don't want to do it. And again, I say this, age does not matter. Does not matter to me what one minute because God called Moses. Age doesn't matter. I'm too old. Who, you said you're too old. Get a gym membership. You won't be that old. Get the bones in shape again. Really? That's what we have to do. There's work to be done in the vineyard. And our world is a disaster. Our society is a disaster. Our cities and towns are a disaster. So it's up to us to change that, believe it or not, at any age. And we change it by love, by decency, by respect, helping when we can. We can't do everything. But if we can say words of hate and be so disrespectful to one another, because we want to, we don't want to change, then we also can say words of love if we want to, if we allow the presence of God truly to act, truly to act. You know, the confessional, I'm not sure so much for here, probably it's more busy for Father Murphy, but at the shrine, they're out the door during the week and on the weekends to hear confessions. Right after Lent, and the Easter season, it's going to drop. It's busy at the shrine, but they're not going to be out the door. They are out the door at Christmas time, but then after Christmas, 
They weren't out the door anymore. You could bring a book. And most of the time, though, in, the, in parishes, if not all the time, I could bring a book wherever I was at, what parish. It was a little bit busy, but there was no, hardly anyone came. So how are we going to understand the word of God if we don't, in what was expected, if we don't get rid of our sins, the junk that holds us back? So we, it's a full picture. We got to do all of it. Confession, the Eucharist, pray the word of God, which you're doing and acting upon it. That's our mission and that's your identity and that's what it means to be Catholic. So if pe you can say to people, if they say, well, why do you go to church? You should tell them right out. Well, the Eucharist, I hear the word of God. I have to ponder, it challenges me to live a better life. You don't have to be a theologian. It calls me to love more. It calls me to forgive more. It calls me to serve more. That's it. That's it. And when I don't do so well, I sometimes have to go to the sacrament of reconciliation. So again, once again, I can be about doing my best to witness the love and kindness and decency and respect and forgiveness of Christ. That is our mission. And that is our Lent. Almost over, but not yet. There's still time. We are not bad people. We sometimes make bad decisions and do bad actions, but we're not bad. We are created with much love, dignity, and respect. And we just, for whatever reason, I don't get it. And that's why I say the church, your family, is the domestic church. If they're not hearing respect and love and kindness and decency from the people they live with and love, coming to a church and hearing a priest isn't going to make much difference because they're not seeing it and lived out in their own reality. And if family members are doing that, you cannot listen to that. You cannot listen to their lies. I don't care if it's your husband, your wife, or whoever. They are lying to you. And if they've been saying it all your married life or family life, it's a lie. That's why Catholics need to open the scripture. The word of God is the truth. If we know we've changed our behavior and our actions, whatever it may be, and some days are better than others, it's not every day is going to be perfect in our life. But if we know we're trying and someone keeps throwing stuff on our face, I would walk out of the room. I wouldn't even bother listening to them anymore when they're not speaking the truth. Because if they're saying things that could still hurt you and destroy you, you cannot listen to that. And unfortunately, that comes within the family more times than you can imagine. Really. The great disrespect we say to one another. And yet we have the gall and the nerve to come to church. Because the church is your home. And if you're not living it in your home, then why come here? It doesn't make sense. This isn't a show. You and I have been called, and we're called to change our behavior and actions. And the people who are saying that, I don't care how many times you go to confession. If it's not changing your life, you're making a mockery of it. You might as well go to the mall. That is our witness. We have heard the word of God today and every day. We need to act upon it. The Eucharist will receive that amen. That amen is a great love that Jesus has for us and we have for Christ. So we have to go out today to do our best to live out that word and not allow anyone to rob us of it. Those days are gone. The word my way or the highway, no it isn't. The only way it is is Jesus and that Jesus for us must be love. That's the only thing that will transform and change our lives, our family lives, and the world to the extent that you and I try our best to love, truly love and forgive one another. That is the extent that Jesus is manifested in the world. We all can do it, all of us. Every day we can make someone's life a little bit better because of the word of God, because Jesus, the Eucharist we receive, and you and I going out doing our best to witness that love, to witness that Eucharist to ourselves and to one another. God bless you.
and we bring that presence of Christ to many through our prayers. We present our needs to the Lord. That the Lord may bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life with generous and open hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who govern in this world may receive the assistance of Almighty God in performing their duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose lives are darkened by the shadow of sin or doubt may be drawn into the light of forgiveness and peace through the grace and mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are preparing to receive the Easter sacraments may be blessed with true knowledge and piety in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be carried by the angels into new life with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Mass intentions are offered up this morning for Albert Gordon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for Father Pat and for his medical team. We pray to the Lord. Lord, In drawing our prayers through Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And loving and gracious God, we thank you for hearing all our prayers. Pray that you grant and meet all our needs. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merci beaucoup. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given us, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash the goodies and cleanse me from all my sins. And pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these sacrificial offerings, that they may profit our conversion in the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting and restraint our, our faults, raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. And through him all the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. 
This is my body, which will be given up for all of you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for, for, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edgar our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis de Sales, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In confidence and in love, let us together recite the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you. Thank you. Please offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon, God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. With him, he has given us all things. And let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. And pray for God's blessing. Be gracious to your people, Lord, we pray that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with delight at your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Have a good day.
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For those in most need of thy mercy. 